and became an intelligence officer with the, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, Canada's domestic spy service. I served there for about 10 years, a little under 10 years, and then left a, a few years back. Can you give us the Mission Impossible insight here and, and so people can, can ride along? Yeah, we were in that, in that in particular, and it's a long story, a long night, but you know, sometimes you, you, you have, you take advantage of the opportunities you have. And this person, we needed to get a, a good look at this person's car and they parked in their driveway every night. And it just so happened that their driveway was open to the, to the driveway or the person beside them. So there were kind of two cars side by side and that we could kind of operate in this little narrow area between the two cars and do our things shielded from the, the neighbors, right? Shielded from anyone seeing what we're doing. I was never here, like we're trying not to be discovered. And so you find these, okay, it's dark, there's a little bit of tree coverage. And, and if someone's driving by, sure, but if, if unless they stop right there, we'll be okay. And so we're, we're crouched down as a little team and we're open the door and sure enough, the person pops up in the front, you know, in, in the front foyer. And we're like, well, if this person takes two steps out their door and goes to their driver's seat, they're going to find a team, a couple of dudes sitting there holding a part of his car in the, in their hands. You know, you have to speak the undercover part. You, you have a cover story. You have this legend. You, you, based on whatever the situation is, ah, we're, we're drunk. We're coming home. It's 11 PM. We're coming home from a hockey game. You know, we're wire four, wire four dudes walking together down the street in this, in this neighborhood. Now this is before ring. Everyone's got a ring doorbell cam. I don't know how they're doing it now. Um, I can only imagine it's the pinging that's going on in front of every, everyone's house with all the car thefts, but you have this cover story and you were like trying to live it. So, and, and we're like, okay, well, who, if someone walks up on us, who's crouching over pretending they're vomiting and the other th three guys are there like carrying their drunk buddy home. Like what's the story, you know, what is the story we're going for and, and found that place. So yes, the, what we're wearing cars were driving, um, everything is supposed to fit into this thing. Now, sometimes it like our cover stories were undercover police officers, not a great cover story. You know, the guy in the front seat wearing dark sunglasses and a baseball cap looks ridiculous. And I, so when I see the movies and I see people dressed up and all in black, like a, like a ninja, and I'm like, well, if you saw that person walking down the street with, with latex gloves on and a, and a black, you know, Balaclava, and you'd be like, what, what the heck is that? You know, that would be instantly freak you out. But if you saw a guy with a hockey bag, you know, coming home late at night, walking back from the bus stop, you know, eh, okay. Like, that makes sense. We also didn't have, um, I don't think Uber was very big when I was there. Now, anyone could stand in a street corner or sit in a car and pretend to be an Uber driver. Like, how great is that? I'm just an Uber driver waiting for, waiting to, to drive somebody. You know, I'm just an Uber driver. I'm waiting for my Uber. I'm standing in the corner with a phone out, right? You'd go, oh, that guy's waiting for his Uber. So we would have to make up these scenarios of why we were where we were um, to plant devices, to search things, to, to, to do that. It was a lot of fun. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.